Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and Lenovo has an affordable ThinkPad for us to take a look at today. This is their ThinkPad 13. It's about $500, give or take, uh, and it actually is a really nice computer for the money. I'm actually very impressed with this, more so than I thought I would be. Uh, so we're going to get into this in just a minute, but I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure that this is on loan from Lenovo, uh, but nobody is paying for this review. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own, and nobody is reviewing this content before it is posted. And of course, this will go back to Lenovo uh, when we are done with our review here. So this is a ThinkPad through and through. It's got all the ruggedness and all the durability of it. Uh, it's got the keyboard that you've come to expect on there too. We'll talk about that in a second. 13.3 inch IPS display, uh, really decent viewing angles on it, relatively matte finish. I say relatively because it is a little bit more reflective than uh, some other matte displays I have used, but it's not a mirror, so it does uh, have some matte finish to it. Uh, it is not a touch screen though, so you can't touch the screen, but you can use your trackpad down here along with the uh, little nub there. Now this one is equipped with an IPS i3 processor at 2.3 gigahertz. It also has four gigabytes of RAM DDR4, as well as 128 gigabyte M2 SSD built in. And you can upgrade the RAM and the, uh, and the solid state drive on here. So if you want to get more storage or RAM down the road, uh, you have that as an option to do, which is great. Wireless AC built in as well. I really like just the overall form factor here. It's relatively lightweight. It's about uh, 3.17 pounds or 1.44 kilograms. Uh, so pretty light weight actually, especially for a ThinkPad, which tends to be more of a, you know, built like a tank. Uh, this one is certainly sturdy like a tank, but uh, relatively lightweight and portable. Uh, you're going to get about eight to nine hours of battery life out of it in my testing. So the battery life is adequate for uh, getting through most of a workday, at least if you're doing uh, light kinds of tasks. Now it's not fanless because it does have that i3 processor built in. So you're going to have an exhaust port over here along with uh, some intakes over here. So you definitely want to keep those areas clear uh, so that the processor does not overheat under load, but generally I'm not hearing the fan uh, come on too often on this device. So it's been uh, running pretty quiet and pretty cool as I've been using it. Uh, one of the things that sets the ThinkPads apart are their keyboards. And you've got, as usual, really deep travel on these keys. So you've got, if you're used to the ThinkPad keyboard, this is a ThinkPad keyboard on here. Uh, really decent keyboards among the best in the laptop industry out there. I'm very uh, pleased with that. The trackpad is a little bit jumpier for me. It's kind of hard to explain, but it doesn't feel like it has the resolution that I would like it to have. It's not as sensitive as I would like. I may have to adjust more settings on it, but it isn't uh, the best trackpad, even though it feels nice and it's uh, the button push on it, the, the click pad here is pretty nice. It just doesn't track as nicely as I would like it to. And of course, you've got that nub there as an option. Uh, what's nice too about this is that the screen goes all the way back to the uh, surface of your desk. It doesn't go back further than this, but it's a good safeguard for uh, preventing things from breaking. The keyboard has a spill guard on it as well, so you can spill a, maybe spill a coffee in here. We're not going to test that, but uh, it should be able to prevent liquid from getting in Inside. The keys, though, are not backlit, so uh, just keep that in mind. As for ports, you get your power port over here for its power adapter. This is a custom Lenovo uh, docking station port here. So they have a docking station that gives you additional USB ports as well as some video outputs. So you have that over there. I haven't tested that yet, but it's an option that you can get for this device. You can just plug it in with a single cable. USB 3.0 slot over here. On the other side, you've got two more USB 3 slots, a HDMI output, and a USB Type-C port as well. And what's nice about that USB-C port is that it also doubles as video output too. So the HDMI will get you up to 1080p. Uh, the USB-C port on here will give you uh, up to 4K resolution. So you do have uh, some options for getting additional uh, display output uh, out of both the HDMI and the uh, USB Type-C port. Now the USB-C port does not support charging the device though. You still have to use the power adapter on it, but uh, you can of course use it for data and for video too. One last thing to look at on here before we get into the performance is the SD card slot. So there's an SD card slot here on the side. Uh, your cards will go all the way in, which is really nice. So you can use that as a means of additional storage or a place to store your multimedia or something while you're walking around and you don't have to worry about uh, that card uh, sticking out too far. It is spring loaded, so it will pop out like that. But um, if, as long as you don't jost jostle it too heavily, it will uh, stay put and you'll be able to use that even on the go. All right, let's take a look and see how it performs now. We're going to start with our YouTube test here real quick. We'll load up my YouTube channel and one of my 4K videos and see how fast that springs to life. Uh, we are on wireless AC here. You see it just comes up right away. Uh, really no problems at all. And I would expect that given that we've got a slightly faster processor in here than a lot of our other uh, low-end PCs. And really for 500 bucks, this display looks great. Uh, the performance on here is really snappy and zippy, as you can see. There is a big difference between an i3 processor and uh, some of those uh, low-powered chips that we find in a lot of these low-price 
high-priced laptops here. So it's kind of a, uh, almost a jolt to uh, start seeing things respond as snappily and as quickly as this one is, if snappily is a word. Uh, let's go visit another website here and you can just see how fast things pop up. Usually those slower processors are kind of bogged down by some of the JavaScript. You see how fast this kind of executes and gets everything uh, up and running here. So really good performance, especially for uh, doing work tasks in web browsing and that sort of thing. And on the Octane benchmark test, which measures how well it does as a web browsing device, looking at uh, rendering JavaScript and HTML, uh, we get a score of uh, 22,194, which puts it really in the pack with a lot of other machines that are um, a lot more expensive, actually. If you look at the Dell XPS 13 from last year, it's pretty much on par with that one. Uh, it's even on par with the Lenovo's ThinkPad X1 tablet, which is running a Core M5. In fact, it's a little bit faster than that one is. And it comes in around the same speed as that Dell Inspiron 3000 we looked at recently that has the same chip on here. So these i3 processors are really fast for this kind of stuff. And uh, clearly, it's showing its uh, performance uh, prowess here on web browsing. But now let's take a look at Microsoft Word and see how it can handle some other types of work. All right, here we are with our newsletter template, and you can see everything is rendering up very quickly. Again, noticeably faster than some of the Brasswell chips. I would actually point you to the review we did just a couple of days ago of the Asus E403SA, uh, which is running with one of those lower powered chips. Now that one costs a little bit less. That one's $399, uh, but this is what $500 gets you. So it's a little bit faster for uh, doing work, and you'll see uh, the difference as you're just kind of scrolling through and loading up different programs and browsing web pages. You will get a little bit faster performance uh, out of this computer than you will out of uh, that other one that costs a couple hundred dollars less. So as you uh, escalate your, uh, in, your investment, uh, you will see a little bit of a return on that with faster, snappier performance with this kind of stuff. It's also a little bit better on gaming as well. Uh, it's not quite a gaming laptop because it doesn't have its own graphics processor, but it can certainly hold its own on some older stuff. We're going to take a look at Counter-Strike as well as Minecraft. So let's see how it does there. All right, we're going to take a look at Counter-Strike first. I'll show you the settings that I have on it right now. I turned off uh, some of the uh, filtering and some of the anti-aliasing to get a, a better frame rate here. So what I wanted to do is get a playable frame rate at 1080p, and I'll just uh, tell you what I'm seeing for frames per second because it's going to be kind of tiny up there in the corner. But I'm getting about 30 frames per second or so right here. I found that when I'm in the open areas, it slows down a little bit, uh, so around 30 right here. And then when we get into some of the buildings and whatnot, uh, we see frame rates increase because there's just less complexity to the graphics. So, uh, you know, I think you can get a good playable 30 frames per second at 1080 on here, and you could probably get it faster if you disable some more of the uh, settings to make it run a little bit quicker. Or you could, you know, filter it down to 720p uh, and then maybe add some uh, detail to the graphics and you can't get it 1080. But no matter what, you're going to be able to play Counter-Strike Go on here pretty decently. Let's take a look now at Minecraft. All right, here we are running Minecraft, and we're looking like we're getting some pretty decent frame rates here, around 70 frames per second right now. I'm seeing it in the pretty much the 60 to 70 to 80 frames per second territory, depending on uh, the complexity of what's on screen. So definitely uh, a playable uh, Minecraft device here for sure. Uh, and you may want to have the Optifine plugin like I have on right now, which gives you a little bit better uh, performance than not running it. But we are at the native 1080p resolution here. So really good stuff, I think, for games like Counter-Strike, games like Minecraft, things like that. You're not going to do as well, though, with AAA titles like Grand Theft Auto V and uh, The Division and others because those are really geared towards computers with their own graphics chips. This one does not have that. It's got the integrated Intel graphics, so you're not going to see uh, AAA performance out of this, but I think for a lot of games, you will do quite well and better than many other uh, $300 or $400 laptops. And on the 3 d Mark CloudGate test, uh, we get a score of 4,842, which is uh, really good, actually. It compares nicely to the Yoga 700 we looked at, also from Lenovo, around the same speed on both both the graphics test that that uh, benchmark performs and a little bit slower on the physics test, which is more processor intensive, but uh, that other computer has an i5 and this one has an i3. So I think for a gaming platform, again, really good for casual stuff. Again, not so much for AAA titles. Let's take a look now at some of its high bitrate movie playback performance and then we'll wrap this up. All right, here we are running with a high bitrate Blu-ray MKV file off of an SSD I have plugged in via USB 3. Uh, runs just fine, no drop frames, really fast performance actually, especially when I want to just jump around to different parts of the movie here. I'm able to do it without any hesitation whatsoever. So again, having that i3 really does make a difference here, both in its playback performance as well as just the ability for it to quickly spin up the movie and get playing. And these are very big files. In fact, this one is about uh, 37 gigabytes or so. So it's able to really tackle that uh, with a lot of ease, which is nice to see 
again on a $500 computer. So that is the ThinkPad 13, and I really am impressed with this because typically I've thought of ThinkPads as uh, more expensive business machines, but this is actually a very reasonably priced business machine that's also uh, good for maybe playing some games and watching some movies on too. It's very well uh, powered, it's very reasonably priced, you have some upgradability to it, really nice display here, IPS again with some decent viewing angles and uh, not too shiny and uh, really, really nice. It is plastic though, but the uh, cover here is made out of aluminum, so at least the screen portion has some metal protection on it. Uh, the rest is a ABS plastic, a pretty high impact plastic, and I think it's going to hold up uh, really well over time. So I think if you're a student or somebody who's traveling a lot, you're looking for something lightweight but powerful enough to get work done, maybe play a game or two and watch a movie, uh, this is going to do exceptionally well. I really can't recommend this one enough because I think it's priced right uh, and it really does perform nicely for uh, what you're going to pay for it. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.